there was a per- certain point in my life with like my education, how I felt with things. The second I started reading, even if it was just like dumb books, just read something with like a different perspective. Or just like yeah. Yeah. yeah, the second you start reading, it definitely actually I, I saw a pivot in my life when I just from starting to read on a regular basis. I agree with you. I have a hard time with it. Sometimes I tell myself I'm going to read a lot. I say I'm reading. The next thing you know, I'm getting drunk while watching Frasier. But I say, <laughs> I tell myself all the time, I'm like, you, you're gonna, you're gonna read this book, and then right. like I just start, I'm like, yeah, but not right now though. Like, <laughs> but no, I, I think, I think that's a good path, man. I, I think that's, I think, I think what people that are gonna succeed going further in society, are people that get creative. Yeah, I mean, you're starting to see there are people yeah. like having some sort of like, uh, at, with the pandemic, there what they call pod schools now. Yeah, right, where they're like groups oh, yeah. of parents saying like, hey. Well, I mean, one, because they're like, hey, I don't know what's going on with the virus anyways, and I just want my kids out of that. But, like, also, I mean, there's some people that I know that I think they're going to keep it that way because they've developed this little group Community. of, like, five or six yeah. kids. Yeah. And they're like, hey, we'll we'll come up with, like, the curriculum for these kids. They get to te- learn in, like, yep. not, like, a, a huge environment where kids, like, because when you have hundreds and thousands of kids just all crammed to a building, yep. it becomes just a... It's like, I mean, a streamlined thing where it's just, like, it's not about the kids. Just push them through. That's right. Child yeah. care. Yeah. It's... it's it's literally what do we do with these kids while the parents are working? Yeah, like that's the way it starts to feel. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I'm all, I'm for all for, I'm such a proponent of just education in general. Can I mean obviously it's easy like you said it's easy to say that because yeah. you can't give people the motivation to learn. They uh, sometimes they have to take it on themselves a little bit. Yeah, hundred oh, percent. Yeah, but providing an environment that is more conducive to learning. Right. Yeah. Which I don't think we do a good job no, of at no, all. No, there's no, not. No. There's no excitement. So yeah, yeah, yeah. in public you know, school, and yeah. we do so. <clears throat> we do a lot of field trips, a ton, mm-hmm. right? So, and like I, I, I try. I'm, I'm, I love miscellaneous and like crazy facts. Like it's just one of my things, right? So like if you're on the beach, well, we're on the beach. We're in St. Pete. So what's near St. Pete? Well, Clearwater. Well, there was a a, a movie about a dolphin that has a prosthetic tail, right? Mm-hmm. And um, anyway, dolphin tails, and so it ended up, and that was out of the Clearwater Aquarium. So we went up, and we actually. So they read a book on it. They went, we went to the aquarium. We got to see the dolphin. Then, the, then I let them watch the movie, right? Like, mm. so we tried to do things that I think would have been fun in school, like some type of field trip that's also educational. And then we learned about like St. Pete. Right now there's a red tide, the tail end of red tide. So we learned, they, I'm teaching my kids about what red tide is and what supposedly what's causing it. Mm. So like, I mean, we're trying to teach them more than just the basics, the ones and zeros and, and you know, I don't know, they, and and then kind of let them do their own thing. Yeah, it's really, who knows if it's right, but it, it's working. Yeah. <laughs> so I mean, I th- I think do what's right for you. Like you said, do what's right for you. Because yeah. like for me, example for example, like I feel like I've gotten more from my teenage work experience yeah. than I did from school. I agree with that. Yeah. Well, and I mean, obviously, I had a very rare situation where my father owned a, a land surveying, geomatics, civil engineering consultation ah, company. Yeah. And as old, like the second I was old enough to work, he was like, "All right, well, carry some gear through the woods." And <laughs> like you know, um, and like at the time, I didn't realize I was retaining things. But as I got older, yeah, I realized like I was picking up a lot of stuff about like mapping, about uh, about just engineering in general, right? And it led to my what like what I do now professionally, because um, I work in an engineering field now, and That's I awful. don't think I would like. I, I'm not in that field because of school. I'm in that field because of what I learned yeah. as a teenager working on the nights and weekends and summer with my father's company. So this thought's not complete yet, but if you think, if you go back mm-hmm. um, a ways back, you, you would look and typically the husband, and it's not about uh, matriarchal systems, but the husband would work, the mother was at home with the kids, and a lot of the education took place in the home. It's very, very family focused, right? The fathers typically they were home for the for the dinners every night. You, you had this typical American family thing going on, and let's mm-hmm. say the up until like the seventies and eighties. Um, and if you look, it's like now we've got systems where prior the pre the pandemic, <clears throat> both on average, husband and wife both work, mm-hmm. both out of the home, uh, children in school, no time at home. And people trying to, t- taking two uh, individuals to earn what one used to earn to be able to support their family, all for the, to live the American dream, to be able to afford to pay their rent, right, or their mm-hmm. mortgage. And then, you know, to get a vacation one time a year if they're lucky. So you start to think about some of these things. And I, and I think about, like, what the pandemic's brought on. And I'm like, maybe this is a good reset for society to go, hey, what, what's important? Like, what's yeah. really, I, I and I'm going to be. I think, yeah. I, I don't know what's going to come out of the next couple of years. 
but it's definitely going to transform society one way or the other. Yeah, yeah. I think it's de- it is. Yeah, and and you know, there's 10 million jobs available today. The newest jobs report shows 10 million jobs available, and there's 9.5 million unemployed. Mm-hmm. So there's more jobs than there are people right now. Yeah. Are they qualified for those jobs? Is a whole different discussion, but. I really think it's not just a pay rate thing because people are trying to pay through the roof now. Jobs that were paying ten dollars an hour, you know, pre the pandemic are paying fifteen to twenty dollars an hour now. Mm-hmm. So I mean, it's it, we're not talking about minimum wage anymore. I think people are really they've had a chance to not work. They've had a chance to spend time with family. They've had you know death and chaos and all this stuff going on. And I think they're really trying to figure out one. They're valuing you know what do they want to do with their time. And and yeah. what positions they want to be in, what what's the effect on their family? I think there's a whole lot of things other than just how much do I get per hour to work. Yeah, do I want to work nine to five? Yeah, something I don't even like doing in the first exactly. place. Just do, people don't, people are tired of the grind. Yeah, which that's what I've like said before. People are like, people just don't want to work anymore. I'm like, I don't think they want to work in the grind anymore. The grind, yeah, it's what they're doing. So now they're trying yeah. to figure out like, well, okay, well, what do I want to do? Yeah, and I think you get a lot of that. Mike, people fall in love with gardening. Yeah, and yeah, you got to spill a little devil. blood in the soil to get it to grow. But it's, <laughs> 